Good morning, everybody. You are going to want um, your interactive notebook and a pencil. So remember, always pause as you um, get what you need or to catch up with what I'm doing. We're going to be doing quite a bit of writing in our interactive notebook today. You do need to upload it onto your slide to um, show me that you did it. Um, and as always, I'm going to remind you that you have more room on your paper than I do on my iPad. So um, as I need more space, I'm going to turn the page. You can continue with the page you've got. Okay, so today we're going to continue with subtracting mixed numbers, but this time it's going to be with unlike denominators, and you're going to learn more about regrouping. I had you rewatch the math, math antics video, which is a fantastic resource. Please make sure that you really are watching these videos. We're getting ready to um, test on everything that we've learned during this time. So please make sure if you skip that before that you go back and watch that. All right, so we're going to label this subtracting mixed numbers with unlike denominators. Last time we put um, information in our notebooks, it was with like denominators. I should probably capitalize that since I did everything else. All right, so we're going to start with whole, a whole number, um, subtracting a mixed number from a whole number. So we're going to start with uh, five minus two and one third. Um, we saw in the video that he then broke this apart to show that, you know, when we were adding, we would say 5 plus 2 plus 1 third. Um, but when subtract with subtracting, it's a little different. So really what we're saying is 5 minus 2 and 1 third is a group. So that comes out to be 5 minus 2 minus 1 third. Okay? So we can start with the 5 minus 2, so step 1. Five minus two equals three. We went ahead and subtracted those whole numbers. Step two. Now we're going to take that three and we're going to subtract the one third from it. Okay? The thing is, we can't do it that way. So we need to convert step three. We're going to convert, oops. Convert that three into a fraction so that three equals, and we're going to look at the denominator that we're using, which is thirds. So we're going to regroup, we're going to take a whole, make it two, and then three thirds because two wholes plus three thirds, which is one whole, is still three. We did not change the value of that three whatsoever, but it does allow us now to subtract that one third. Okay, then step four, we're going to stack as always. So we have two and three thirds minus one third so it leaves us with three minus one three thirds minus one third is two thirds and then two minus nothing is two all right remember to pause catch up so we're going now from whole minus mixed to mixed minus mixed Make sure that you're writing in a way that is very, very legible and usable. 
So when I look at those pictures, I'm looking for interactive notebooks that are actually usable. If they're sloppy and um, rushed, then you can't use them. All right, so mix minus mix. We're going to do a couple of examples. One was is without needing to regroup, and the other will be needing to regroup. So this is mix minus mix without regrouping. So this time we're going to use six and four fifths minus one and three tenths. And we're going to say step one. Convert your fractions into common denominators. Or equivalent fractions, rather. Convert fractions into equivalent fractions, uh, finding the common denominator. So, we're going to worry about the four-fifths and the three-tenths. And what do we do when we have unlike denominators? We create a t-chart. And the reason why I'm not putting that as a step is because you should know that by now. That's what we did uh, the last week and a half or so. Okay. So I'm going to list the factors of five. And I know I don't need to go any further than that because I know 10 will be the least common multiple. So I just need to worry about changing four-fifths into tenths. What did I do that five to get the 10? I multiplied it by two. What did I do the four to get that 10? I multiplied it by two. So now, step two is we're going to stack. So now we're going to go back up and see that our whole number is six. And the four-fifths is now eight-tenths minus, up here we have the one whole, and our three-tenths didn't need to change. All right, so now we can subtract. Eight-tenths minus three-tenths, eight, seven, six, five-tenths. Six minus one is five, and of course we simplify, so we get five and one-half. Remember to pause, catch up. Okay, our final example, and I'll let you go, is uh, mixed minus mixed with regrouping. All right, and I'm going to give you the problem five and one third minus two and four six. All right, always, always, before you even worry about regrouping or anything like that, you always check those denominators. I see that I have unlike denominators, so I'm not worried about stacking yet. I'm not worried about regrouping yet. We're not ready for that. So always step one is to convert your fractions to uh, like denominators. All right, so we have, we're worried about one third and four six, and you should know automatically we do a T chart. And I want you to keep practicing this, even when they're friendly fractions like thirds and six, where one doesn't even have to change because along the way, you will definitely have one that's not friendly like that. So keep practicing. I want you, I've got to see the T chart as part of your process. All right, so we have three six six. So I know 6 is a common denominator, at least common multiple. 4, 6 is already in 6, so I need to worry about my thirds. I know I multiplied by 2 uh, to get 6, so I have to do the same here. So now step 2 is to stack. So I'm going to have 5, and my 1 third is now 2, 6, minus 
2 and 4, 6 never changed. And I want you to see, and yes, put this in your notes, see that we cannot subtract 4 from 2 in this form. When we go to subtract, you can't subtract 4 from 2. If you had um, two M&Ms, but you wanted to take four away, you can't do that. All right, so we're going to mark that we see that we cannot subtract four from two in this form. So that means step three is to regroup from the whole number part. So that means that 5 and 2, 6, we're going to regroup one whole. Okay, so we're taking a whole and we're regrouping it up here. So I know that 4 and 6, 6, because that's what I'm looking at the denominator, is the same as 5. Will you write that there, please? We didn't change the value of the 5 by regrouping 4 and 6, 6, same value. And what we're doing is we're adding that 6, 6 here. So now that equals 4 and 2, 6 plus 6, 6 is 8, 6. So we have 4 and 8, 6 instead of 5 and 2, 6, same value minus 2 and 4, 6, so that now we can subtract 4 from 8. Okay, I want you to rewind that a little bit and rewatch that and see if it clicks for you, if it didn't the first time. We regrouped from the 5, right, and we converted it to 4 and 6, 6 because 6 is our denominator, 6, 6 is 1 whole, so 1 whole plus 4 is 5, when we gave it to the 2, 6, it now made it 4 and 8, 6. So now we can subtract. 8, 6 minus 4, 6 is 4, 6. And 4 minus 2 is 2, which equals 2 and 2 thirds. Thank you for watching the entire video. Um, on your slide, the fact that you got to the end and you're still listening, I want you to put the code RAD, R-A-D, to kind of go with the theme of our slides um, on Tuesday's math slide somewhere. I'll see if I can find it, and um, that will tell me you got to the end. All right, you all have a wonderful day.